This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. Hey everybody, it's Jimmy from the DIY and Digital, and today we are designing and printing a steel fabrication plant. Welcome back everybody. First of all, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates like this video. So today we're doing number three on our poll, which was a steel fabrication plant. And for this one, I know a lot of you guys asked if I could slow down and go step by step through some of the designs that I do. And what I'm gonna do is the uh, sped up part of my video where I'm designing stuff in Tinkercad. You're going to be able to watch and listen to me talk my way through that on a video on my Patreon page and you'll be able to access that for just $1 a month. So the uh, lowest level will be able to access that video. So if you're already one of my patrons, you'll be able to check that out. If you are not and you would like to be, there is a link in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started. I start as usual by doing my research. That means Google. I first look to see what the exteriors look like and then the interiors to really get a feel for the building. I will not be doing one-to-one -one on this, but rather a building that gives a feel of a steel fabrication plant. What I determine is I need a long building, about two stories tall, with an office on the side and large bay doors on each end. Next, it was time to hop into Tinkercad. I first began by sizing out the building. I will be doing this print on my Prusa Mini rather than on my resin printers because of the size. This gives me a 180 millimeter cubed space of design. Next I add the office and then I worked on the pitched roof by using the roof shape in Tinkercad and a wedge for the side office. I duplicate the roof shapes for later and then hollow out the building using whole cubes. Once the building is hollowed out, I add the pass-through bay doors, and then I start on the side detail. I want this to look like a metal building, so I added vertical supports to the sides. After this, I add a frame around the bay doors. I then use a whole cube to cut the frames out rather than piecing them together. I add some doors on the sides as well. Now it's time to make the roof. The first thing that I do is make an oversized version of the roof and use it as a stencil to cut out the perfect pitch of the building. Next, I create a lean-to roof on the office with a similar technique. And then add some roof details, such as a cap and some ridges to simulate metal roofing. Next, it's time for the gantry that moves the steel from the cars to the plant and vice versa. I start with a solid base. This may not be prototypical, but it will help with a stable print. 
I create supports for the gantry and brace them appropriately. I then put a couple of beams for the trolley that carries the beams from the cars to the steel plant. Now it's time for some beams. These are super simple to create. I duplicate a few, stack them, and group them. I also make different sizes. The gantry and beams will be resin printed. And that's it. This video is brought to you with support from my patrons on Patreon. You can join my Patreon community for exclusive content. You can join for a monthly contribution of $1, $2, and the all-new $5 engineer level, which includes an exclusive digital model of the month that you can download and print yourself. A link to my Patreon page is in the description below. So now we have the design all set up and we can go ahead and get it set up to print in our slicers and we can go ahead and print it out. All right, so we're done with printing our model. Let's go ahead and check it out. So that is the steel fabrication plant. Uh, still working on a few kinks for and get that for sale on my Etsy store. Not to mention it's a really large model and the building itself takes about 14 hours to print total. So um, still some manufacturing kinks to work out on that before I can get it up on my Etsy store. It'll probably be a limited run when I do it just because of the amount of time it takes. And I wanna say a special thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. They're listed right here. You can check out my Patreon page in the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any updates like this video. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading. Gotta wait on the, um, whatchamacallit, the water heater. It's making noise. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Problems of shooting in a garage.